But uh, during the laning phase, it'll still be a little bit difficult. Uh, I see a lot of potential Roman ganks out going into the Underlord lane, wherever the Ricky may be. Probably going to see a lot of TPs as well. I like the Underlord pick too because it kind of signifies that Pain's going to go for another kind of high right-click damage hero. It's going to be negated a little bit by Underlord just kind of existing. Of course, most Underlords like to go 3-1-1 for the Firestorm because uh, that just helps them clean up the wave. They get to push down the wave even quicker, get onto the tower, and then level up even quicker. But uh, this might be a game where we might see a balance kind of one, maybe a 2-1-2, two, two, or a... I can't imagine you go three in atrophy. So probably a 2-1-2, two, two, or just a, maybe a 2-0-3, oh, maybe. But you kind of need that root in the lane. Even level one in the root's really nice. So I imagine they're going to hold off with this uh, Underlord, try to hold, figure out what specs they want to go for. They want to run it again th against the Ricky, though. That's that's kind of the end game goal here. Oracle is moderately good against Underlord, though. Uh, Underlord doesn't have great mobility until he gets his phase boots. And until then, Oracle could kind of just root him down almost every time. Not to mention, there's still Roman ganks that could come from the Earthshaker. Beastmaster. So we're actually going to see Beastmaster is going to be the last pick for the first phase here. And uh, I like it, too, for this one. There's a lot of uh, just stunning potential already on the side of Pain Gaming. They have a little bit more reliable disables. And Beastmaster kind of, like, holds that reliable disable in. And not to mention, you'll be able to catch off the Disruptor in the back lines. Most of the time when you roar you're that, that Disruptor, as a Beastmaster, you're probably going to kill the hero almost instantly. And I imagine that that's exactly what's going to be happening here. So not too surprised to see this pick up. It, it might be a little bit lacking on like what they want to go for the draft so far. But uh, overall, I think it's still a very nice pick. Still not really revealing much because, again, these uh, South American teams, they have yet to pick up their mid. Not saying that anybody else usually does, but uh, in the North American scene, believe it or not, uh, people picked their mid at the very beginning. So it's already showing a very significant difference between the two regions uh, picks-wise. But, you know, mid seems like a bit more of a sacrificial role in the sense nowadays people like to first pick their mids or they like to last pick their mids to make it a big, big surprise. But highly doubt it that they're going to end up picking the mid here. Infamous probably going to look at their safe laner, and I don't think you can run the Slark here. I imagine you run... Or maybe you do pick your mid and you just go lean it. Uh, okay, so you are going to run the troll. That's moderately good. It's just still a little bit weak to just Ricky overall. If Ricky can get any abilities off, it's like the big scary play there. But uh, troll is actually a pretty nice pick as well. There's a lot of people picking up troll right now. It's a very safe, safe laner. It gets the extra armor from switching into melee axes. The roots somewhat reliable. I mean, the root is not 17%. So if it's not 17%, that means it's not 100%. Because 17% is 100%. Million. A lot of these, I just realized a lot of these heroes are just like oh, moving their heads. Pick. A lot of head moving, bobbing heroes. Dieting. Very weird. Storm All right, well, there it is. I was talking about it at the very beginning of the game. Storm Spirit is going to be picked up on the side with the Disruptor. So maybe a little bit of a deny as well, because Storm is probably exactly what Pain needed as well. But at the same time, you know, you can't really deny picking up your Storm Spirit. This might be an Ember Spirit response, but I don't know if Pain Gaming has an remaining. Ember Spirit mid player. They could, though. Five they could, though. Remaining. They can always surprise me. Never really. That's the one thing I guess I didn't really look at is like what heroes people pick a lot right now in this uh, in this squad. But I remember Pain Gaming from the past. They've always got some tricks up their sleeve. And this could actually just be a mid Ricky. But it's not. We're gonna get the OD, and I'm already I'm already ecstatic about this because OD. I didn't get to see any OD in in the uh, North American region, and now we see Pain Gaming taking it. And not to mention, I even saw like OD getting picked up on um, oh, what region was that? SEA earlier uh, last night slash this morning for some people. And it seems like it's just OD. We're off the radar for other people, but Pain Gaming, they're going to take this up in a heartbeat. It's really good against the Troll Warlord as well. You can just Astro Imprisonment the Troll as soon as the ultimate comes out or Astro Imprisonment whoever he's going to target. Whether or not you're the target or he's the target is the big question, but it's just 
yeah, just astral imprisonment, the target holds over the troll warlord. It's a really, really nice thing overall. But Storm Spirit, moderately good still against OD. It's going to be Robos, actually, in the mid. That's exactly what I remember from when I ended up. Actually, I've casted both of these teams before. It's just the last time I think I casted Infamous. No, this is all the same squad from the last time. The last time I remember getting like significant things about Infamous, I can't remember if it was like Black was on the team, but I don't think so. I don't think Black was ever on. No, Black was on Infamous at one point. Anyway. Gonna get into this bad boy. Pretty straightforward stuff going on here. We get this big boy Earthshaker. That is a lot of total games. Holy moly. That is some crazy stuff. Prepare is your camera battle. working? Your future okay, God. It scared me. You let yourself get carried away. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing you're following exactly who I'm following. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, ladies and gents, welcome to the first game of the day. Looks like it's pretty straightforward. We're not having too much else going on here. Looks like some aggressive warding already in the mid here by Sladen. Look at this beautiful clockwork. Look at him go. Look at him go. Oh, HFN, actually, he's, he's camping out the Roshan a little bit here. Maybe he wants to try and put uh, put a little fight for the ward here. Can... See, the funny thing about the fact that Ricky is now only getting his ult at 6, he can actually, his cosmetics and dances actually do something. So it's not at all surprising to see he's just jumping up and down in this Roche pit. Anyway, let's go from top to bottom here for Infamous. I'm going to start with uh, Disruptor. Sorry, did I... Gonna have Disruptors, gonna be played by Pepita. Robos in the mid. Will be the Storm Spirit. The battle begins. Clockwork afterwards will be Sladen. See him going for the Bounty Runes already. The Troll Warlord. Be played by Dark Shit. Just call him Darkest J. Something like that. But looks like they are trying to go for HFN already here. And HFN has to go tricks in the trade to try and get the cheeky jump up. And we'll get it, but will be enough is the question. Just barely. There is no salves available, actually, unless there is some down in the bot, but I'm not... A, yeah, there is one on the Oracle, so we're good on that market. And then Sacred, in the bot lane in the meantime, will be the Underlord. But overall, it's a pretty straightforward game already. There's not too much else happening so far. This, uh, that first blood almost attempted there. It's not going to end up getting too much else. He'll be fine for the time being. I say that, though. He's very low HP. He has to end up using his tricks just to get into the lane. So it looks like uh, the lanes... We're actually going to be running the troll against the King RD here. We got Sladen coming in as well. It's the first item, Boots Clockwork. It's pretty standard nowadays to see him do that because it's uh, he's got moderate eight uh, mana regen. It's not really going to be much of an issue overall in the lane up at the top and then in the mid. It's still going to be the Storm versus OD. Another very standard lineup as well. Doesn't really look like too much else would really go down. I imagine some early kills will happen if Robos manages to overstep his boundaries. Just that Astral Imprisonment is always so good. So, I'm very excited really to see how HFN Ricky ends up going in this scenario because it's been a long time since I've seen an actual Ricky player go ham. But uh, he's, like I said at the very beginning of the draft, he's against the lane where the Atrophy Aura is going to be. Can't really purge it. It's like we're already going to get a pause coming out here. Question is, is it going to be a kill on the Storm Spirit in the mid? Because uh, he's already moderately low HP here. The Astral Imprisonment does 175 damage. He's an int hero with... Uh, what's his resistance at the moment? It's 26%. <laughs> we already got the laughs coming out here. They're totally ready. This, this pause has been... 
future is grim. Anyway, it looks like pain throwing out the taunts early here. There's already pauses coming out. They're like, yeah, this this seems all too familiar with this South American Dota scene. Sit Plus, on, all these guys play with on. each other. It's not like it's completely abnormal for them to be throwing out these all chat lines against each other. It's, yeah, it's not a kill on Robo, so he's still moderately low. Shouldn't overextend his boundaries against Mandy. God, what, a, what another simple name in Dota 2. Mandy. Big fan of simple names in Dota. Like Hector. There's like a guy named like Bob. There's got to be a guy named Bob. And his, his Dota name has to be a guy named Bob. There's no way it's just Bob. <laughs> Alright, anyway, HFN is going to be in a bit of a situation here. He's losing a, quite a bit of HP. The Disruptor Field will go down, but it's not going to throw down the fire. It's actually, now it looks like Sacred's going to be the one in the slight bit of issues here. But HFN is going to burn up a little bit here. Sacred going to go ahead and pop the Fairy Fire. Is still burning down, but he's not going to burn down completely. 444 trying to get him. Salve goes out, though. HFN is going to get salved up by 444 as well here. It's not going to get the salve interrupted. And, well, Sacred salved as well, and that's first blood. It's actually split, though, so it's not a hard first blood. Just split amongst the creeps here. Meanwhile, in the top lane, it looks like they're trying to apply some aggression here, but... It's very hard to end up trying to get a kill here. Not least until Dunhai ends up getting... Well, I say that, though. They managed to trap King RD in the cogs. They push him away. He takes a bit of damage, but he'll be able to jump away from this one. He does have wands. Wand charges. So Dunhai trying to help out as well. But like I was saying, it's going to be real hard for Pain to get a kill in this lane until they get Aftershock. But we just saw that Infamous are very, very possible at getting kills themselves, dropping the cogs. But I think that was the last time they're going to be able to do that. Running out of mana. Back up, but no, it looks like Troll's perfectly fine. I thought they were going to go on him again, but he was just getting slowed up by the boar. But level one boar, pretty weak overall. So now it's level, actually, it's been level two. Slow is just not good enough. All right, so I want to talk about this this thing about runes, all right? Runes, they're OP, all right? I think Sumail said it best. I keep on referring to this. It's just... It's just in mid, all right? If you get a regen rune or a DD rune, you your lane is just like... It, it's like the past 15 Radiant minutes. Not actually killed. 15 minutes. There goes Pepita's Courier in the back lines there. That's another thing I'll talk about in a minute after I talk about the runes still. If you get a regen rune or a DD rune as a mid player, like your lane, your last like couple minutes is lane, just wiped away completely. 444. He too is about to be wiped away completely. Didn't have a tango available to quell that tree and will end up going down the glimpse HFN back into the field and he's burning a lot here, but it's only level two fire. Firestorm's not gonna kill him off today. There are bounty runes though, but it looks like we actually have Mandy just coming in from the mid grabbing them instead. It's not even bottled, it just wants some clockwork. Chasing after Dunhai here. He makes him into the pit, but try to get the deny. And Sladen trying his best to hold him over. Ah, he's not going to get that deny. He was close, though. He's mid-attack animation. Sladen is going to be beaten to it. Get that easy gold out from that one. But anyway, yeah. Regen rune, DD rune. Like, your games, your mid lane... It resets, basically. Like, you have the second chance. And Arcane Rune's great. Yeah, sure, you're a Storm Spirit, so Arcane Rune is fantastic. But, like, Arcane Rune on other heroes don't get you kills. Haste Rune gets you gets you a kill, maybe. But then other than that, it's just super weak overall. And speaking of which, Mandy just picks up a DD Rune, and this is what I'm talking about. You can see, well, I guess not because Robo zipped out of it, but you can see it just with the denies as well. Like, you will deny every creep you click you will get every CS of every creep you click on because you have a DD rune. And what's what What can you do about this? You literally can't do anything. Robos is sitting in the jungle because he can't walk in the lane. You just can't risk getting right-clicked by Mandy. Check the Outpost Wars. I'm a big fan of Outpost Wars. 
everyone goes for those outposts extremely early, but we do see a two-man rotation coming in here. Mandy gonna imprison himself, but this might be his killer here. They do bring Oracle in. I think that'll be enough for them to at least deter a little bit here, but Mandy's gonna be disarmed here. Now Storm zips in. Robos, this is a perfect opportunity since he can't right-click back, though. Mandy does have enough heal, though. Now they have the Astral. They drop the ultimate there, and they get Robos. Not to mention Slide and dies as well. In the meantime, they also get the kill on, on Darkseid in the top, and Sacred dies in the bot. Pain just, Infamous just lost four heroes to Pain in all different lanes. Yeah, my exact thought. <laughs> four lanes separately from the area. Pain was able to get so many kills. And now we see Pain with this little extra lead here. They're coming in with some heroes. They want to get this jump on Robos. They don't see him quite yet. Now 444 does manage to pop the self preserve, but he's not going to get it. Robos is going to be able to zip up and down here, but again, he's only level 1 with that. It costs a lot of mana, but they're not going to hold him down. King RT throws down some fireworks. And he's like, alright, let's just get mid. And they're going to do this one. Look at all these couriers coming mid. <laughs> Pain just taking the advantage they've already been given. Just going home with it. This is a free tower. Infamous do not want to contest this. Wow, I just, I was hovering Oracle and, and Shaker, and I just got a really nice line, but I doubt that it's not really a big one. But uh, he asked how bad he would break their spirits. Anyway, looks like Infamous again. They're going to lose Sacred down here. Sure, you pop the field in HFN. Ooh, careful there. One more second in that fire, he'd be toast. He doesn't love a good toast. Toast, though, up in the top. King RD is going to throw down the roar. Still managed to get clicked by the cogs here. Maybe he'll be fine. Robo is just trying to dive him. There is a courier coming in as well, but they do manage to miss the sun because look at that. There's a haste on the storm. Ooh, he got stunned though, so he's not going to keep that TP. He's just going to end up having to use the regen from the good old clarity. But like I pointed out earlier, sure, a haste rune's great and all. And you'll get a kill off of it, and that's really about it. But you know, one kill makes the difference. One outpost also makes the difference. There you go. But again, we have a disruptor hanging off on the side here. He's going to come and just probably take it back as soon as he's uh, knowing he's in the safe zone here. Looks like the broom handle is actually going to be picked up for the Underlord. It's a very good passive item for him. Sacred coming in from the low ground, trying to take it back. But once he took it, he saw that Dunhai was on the high ground as well as 4 for 4 on the sides. HFN. Uh, they're not going to go for it. They're going to make sure they keep this outpost, though. They don't want them to get any experience back. So as as a result, we see Infamous in the top here. Smoked up on Sladen as well as Pepita. They want to go and get this outpost. And they're going to get it. King RD is hanging around to make sure it doesn't happen. But you know what? That's what a smoke does. They'll be able to get this outpost. No problem. That's back, though. They're going to easily catch King RD in here, but King RD is 7. Clockwork is 4. They do throw out the roar, though, and Darkseid comes in as well. And King RD, they're going to throw out the ult. Control. He's dead. Easy pickings. It's a very early spec for Troll Ultimate. I say that, though. He's actually level 8. Darkseid's been having a great lane. Looking at the net worth, actually, though. He's still 3rd in the net worth. OD is actually trailing with the net worth as well as HFN having a great time in the in the mid as well, or mid HFN having a great time in the safe lane opposing safe lane as well. He's actually got triple wraith bands, and then he's gonna go straight into the defusal play. This is a very common build we see from a lot of core Rickies. Maybe not triple wraith bands. I think it's a double wraith band, but maybe he felt you know what I've got so much gold. Just look at all this damn gold I got. So he's going to go ahead and put that extra in there. But it looks like Infamous, they want to go for a kill up here in the top. But this bird sees everything. Well, they know that Sladen is hanging out. Now the bird's just died. So now we don't quite know. There is a... There's actually a Dire Observer Ward here that does actually scout out a little bit of this. But it's not, not quite enough. Now they see him. They see him walking through here perfectly fine. They want to go for it. They might turn around, though. OD is farming up a stack here, but he's got to be careful. King RD does have double boars out. Clockwork Flare goes out. It only steals two creeps. 
Beastmaster gonna dig. He finds a creep. Good old trusty shovel, not being super trusty at the moment. It's just gonna go back to farm and stacks. Actually, they might go for dark stay here. Nah, they're not gonna. They're gonna hold off for now. There's no way they can really catch him. Down to the bot. Kind of the same story. Not too much catching going on here. Just a lot of clockworks. Clock is six, though, so this does allow him to then have the global map pressure, but they see him on the map, so there's no way that Roman gang's going to happen at the moment. Looks like Infamous are going to take this outpost back. It's, it's not really a big issue to end up getting the outposts this early into the game. You want to wait. Maybe that's a little bit closer to the time frame. But uh, it's not a big problem so far. Looks like just a lot of rotating around at this point now that uh, Pain and Infamous have their grip on the game at the moment. Pepita throws down an Observer Ward. It's immediately scouted out by a bunch of boars as well as King RD floating around. Turns around on Pepita. Drops the roar as well. They're clicking away, but in comes Slatten trying to help it out. But I think Pepita still ends up going down here. He's being clicked by the boars, and he's probably just dead, but still. King RD. That's going to be a 1 1 trade, though. The Echo Slam is going to be dedicated outside the Roshan pit to end up killing off Robos as well as the Sandy's Eclipse. So they get they get the good old two for one trade here. They might get three as well. They throw the smoke down on Slatten. They're trying to get the root. Didn't quite get it, but still. Slatten goes down, is going to end up getting hit by the tricks of the trade. HFN not trying to burn any extra mana here. They do manage to block off the troll. But he does have the quelling blade. He can start quelling the trees and trying to find the right target here. They can't really go in this one. And now they find the root with the silence coming out as well. They have to do as much as possible to keep this Ricky alive. But I don't think they're going to be able to. Dark Sage just does so much damage to him. HFN will go down. He's actually an inch away from being all right. Storm Spirit does jump back in though. They go for 444. They're going to go for more though. Dunhai does manage to land the stun just in time as well as going down the fissure, but it just won't be enough. Dark Shay will end up getting the kill as well. It's a three for three trade at the end of the day. Applause indeed, yes. Uh, too good, too good. Still a three, three trade at the end of the day. I think it's still good on the side of Pain Gaming though, because uh, they did not lose their OD and they lost their storm on the side of Infamous, but uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, the OD is 12 to where the uh, Storm Spirit is 10. So we can wish down at the bottom real quick. 444 four, four. again. Sanity's Eclipse. But it's not going to be used. Obviously, he doesn't have it already because they're going back in, though. They find the kill on 444. Four, four. Roll gets it. Robo's low mana, but not low enough. Is going to be able to zip on out of here. He's got bottle as well. The Glimpse is going to actually pull back the OD, but it will not save the troll. Darkshade will eat the dirt. They're pinging out more. They know this clockwork is right here. Sladden in a bit of trouble. HFN coming in. No defusal quite yet. But he's still going to get the slow just because he has an orb of venom. Sladden pops down the cogs. Maybe trying to hold over for the time. But there's the banishment. This looks like a very, very dead clockwork. Easy pickets. There's a ring of Aquila. That's another easy, good item for HFN. Here's going to send it out. It's like having yet another Wraith Band. It literally is just another Wraith Band. Gives you seven damage. It looks like in the meantime, they'll try to take this top outpost back, though. Mandy does come back up, though. He's trying to get some confirmed kills here, because Sacred's not confirmed. They do drop the root, though. Robos comes in, and they're going to get their response. The Clockwork comes in as well. They got him. What necromancy? Weathermancy. Sorry, not necromancy. Back in the mid, 444, trying to heal up, though. Tr with the ultimate, just couldn't quite get it, though. FM is still taking kills here, even though it seemed like at the very beginning, as soon as that those four random kills happened in the game, it seems like Infamous are crawling their way back in a really good way as well. It looks like we do end up seeing the Disruptor die out from HFN here. Sacred getting chased by HFN, but it's not exactly the scariest Ricky right now. I say that he does have Diffusal. He might be the scariest Ricky right now. It looks like Infamous will just play their cards as well as they should. we will disengage for now. Go back in the jungle, kill up some more creeps. 
Robles will TP to the bot and farm out the bot for a little bit because he's a little bit behind as well. He's actually underneath the net worth of the Underlord. Well, he's tied with the Underlord. He's he's underneath the net worth of the Beastmaster. Does end up finding a clumsy net. I don't know what he sent back. But uh, he's going to go for the Solar Crest build. This is very standard for a lot of off-laning heroes. Actually, he, just, he's, he sends back the net too. But this is very standard build for a lot of offlane heroes because you see them end up going these like small tier items that translate into just even bigger items. And Solar Crest in this game, super strong. Infamous, they smoke up. They hit Pain had no idea. They could get the easy wrap on this three. Dunhai is going to be the first one on the low ground here. They smoke as well, though. They smoke directly into Infamous, and Infamous are more ready than they are. And then they drop the static Storm Kinetic combo. Storm zips in. They get the kill on Rope with the pain. 444, he goes down as well. They're going for more. Pepita is the first one to die. HFN comes in, though. They find the kill on Robos. They buy back immediately from the Disruptor and Infamous. They're running scared. Their big boy just died. They got to get back in there, but they can't. There's nothing to get back in on. HFN click it away. Slap runs out of mana in Dark State. They can't do anything. Infamous. No BKBs. No nothing like that. They can't re engage. They bought back on the Disruptor as well. You don't want to end up feeding away that one. Easy farm. You don't want to die away on that one. But, um, they still, they trade, but definitely not evenly. It's pain. They know what advantages they could take here, and they're they're showing that they know exactly what to do here. It's like a Yasha, by the way, is going to come out for the Ricky. It's most likely going to translate into the Manta, because this is a pretty standard item on him. Nowadays, you got to find a way to purge that dust that gets out of here. Back in the mid, though, we do see, yet again, this Disruptor. Getting picked off. Yeah, try to get that glimpse kinetic field, bud. You ain't getting nothing. You ain't getting nothing. That being said, though, pain. Gonna be a little they have to be careful down in this spot here. Infamous. They have the hook. They get the hook in there. Robo's clicking away. Trying their best here. The Echo Slam comes through. They annihilate all the heroes with the sand and eclipse as well. Robo's able to get out for the time being, but at the same time, they still manage to lose sacred. Dun high looking for more. By the way, this was the blink reveal. Look at that damage combo. We just see Pain absolutely annihilating with that blink reveal. A beautiful time for it as well. That fight recap, there was so much damage in there, and that's an easy pick. It's 19 minutes in. They get this free tier 2 tower. They'll keep the outpost. There's no real way that Infamous will be able to get back unless Robos just go ahead and zip over to there. But I highly doubt they want to dedicate that. They don't want to be too insane right now. Training for that one. See, Ricky. He's got his Yasha, finally. The supports on Pain are, like, doing an absolutely amazing job here. It just seems like Infamous, they have the right kind of, of supports. Speaking of which, Sladden comes in, drops the hook immediately, but in the meantime, they lost Robos in the bot to Mandy here. But it looks like 444 trying to get out here. Doesn't have a four staff. Is going to go ahead and drop the purge. Trying his best to confirm a kill. And they will get the kill on Slatin and return Sacred. I think Sacred still ends up going down here. No, the Glimpse is going to be there for the Disruptor. They do end up immediately going for this one. They drop their war, though. That way, can't be right clicking, but still muted, still silent, still dies. They trade two for two. You don't want your Ricky dying this much right now as well. That's a lot of gold that just out into the wind. It was a dominating streak, so it wasn't huge, but. Still, just a lot of gold out into the wind. A gift from the tempest of uh, looks like Hurricane Pike's now finished up on the OD here. That's going to be another big crucial item for him. He can actually force staff his en enemies and or friends away out from the Static Storm Kinetic combo. That's like super, super important. It's funny, you know, 10 minutes ago I was talking about how it was like only 9-9. Nine, nine. Now we're looking at 16 and 20. About to be 16 and 21. The glimpse is there from Pepita. We'll send back the OD, and I guess Mandy's not able to get back in time. They can't get the kill. The Force Staff, not, oh no, he used it aggressively actually, so not able to help him out. They actually lose Dunhai there. Or Dunhai, whichever one you want to go for here. And it looks like they will at least get the clockwork here. Support for support, four for four. Only difference is, is that Ricky got the kill and Pepita got the kill on Dunhai. But it looks like Pain, they're going to take the advantage they've got. They're going to go into this Roshan. They're going to clean it up, and I really don't think Infamous have any great way to contest this. They don't have a Static Storm Kinetic combo, at least for, like, literally one second. 
So they will actually just use this as the opportunity. They'll smoke in. Robos. They've got the opportunity, but it's just not enough. Pain. They'll be able to take the Roshan and Infamous. They got to run. They got to run. They didn't see the smoke, though. The big thing is that there's... Well, there's no sentry in the mid, actually, so they can't jump HFN. Ro Mandy tries to go for the jump on there. This aggressive Dire Ward does see it this whole entire time when he went to go get the farm. <laughs> dire dropped the scan. There's nobody in the scanned area at the moment, so Ricky could farm a little bit more freely if they want to rotate down there, but it looks like Payne's just hanging out here. Maybe trying to find something overall to grab here. HFN does scout the troll. Does understand that he's in the lane farming. However, HFN walks over a very fresh sense reward. Doesn't want to end up getting spotted out here. Rotates up to the high ground. He could end up getting spotted there. But they do end up seeing the Beastmaster in the top lane. So they know their lead disable is not available. But instead, they actually hook an illusion of the Oracle outside the Roshan pit. And now they know there's no clockwork hook. King RD, he goes in, he nips this courier. Good luck, bud. Troll, you ain't getting nothing from this, and they end up killing out. Robo's on the sideline here. HFN's not done, though. They didn't end up getting everybody back with that push, and now Pepita, he's by himself. The HFN. It's not exactly the kind of date you were looking for, but... <laughs> Zero out of five Uber indeed. Uh, I don't even know how Uber works. I've never been in one. I imagine they're pretty fun. Or it's, you know, I think it's more for concerts. But anyway, yeah, what a terrible Uber. It does not help them out of there. He's just dead immediately. Feels bad, man. Where was that crit coming from? Huh weird for some reason i was watching king rd crit oh here we got the live action replay no i'm just kidding <laughs> sacred getting caught out here doesn't have the taxi this time he's just dead this, i guess i guess it could have been technically a replay in the sense that it, they swapped out the disruptor with the fact that the or i don't know overload just nothing they can really do Pain now. HFN's going to TP down to the bottom outpost while they take the mid tower. So that way HFN can apply some pressure to the bot lane while the top pressure is being applied with the mid pressure as well. Pain taking this game really nicely so far. And uh, I mean, this looks like Pain's game to win. That being said, you know, there's always been some crazy games where people have managed to lose somehow. But I, I don't know. With the BKB that just got picked up on OD, I highly doubt it. It is coming in the courier though, so they can't quite find it yet. Sladen is going to be picked off though. HFN comes in with the smoke, finds the root as well. Easy pickings, easy cleaning. Looks like they're going for more though. They want to go for this easy kill. They drop the static storm, but it's not going to do anything. HFN completely unfazed because guess what? He's a big boy. He actually has 15 points of regen. With the assistance of Vladimir's pipe as well as the Royal Jelly blinks in immediately, tries to go for another pick off, and he'll get the clockwork buyback. Guess what? You did. Storm Spirit zips in. He's got, no, he's got enough mana to hoats the next set of creeps here, but that won't really be enough. This backdoor protection is going to be off for a very long period of time, and this Rax is dead no matter what. Maybe the glitch with the Beastmaster Boar is still a thing. Ah, Infamous, they dropped the GG. They don't really want to hold on to this game for too much longer. They understand this is not a great one. BKB expended. Echo Slam thrown, Sanity's Eclipse dropped, and Infamous, they just don't want to hold on to this game. They, they understand it's out of control here, and this is a very different Infamous than we, see in the, than we saw in the qualifiers. The initial qualifiers, at least, but... Let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the stats here. Let's go to the... Uh, try to go to the net worth graph so we can see how crazy, how quickly this game went out of control. Yeah, we can see the team XP and the player net worth. Yeah, here we go. Player net worth this went super out of control, super quick. The OD and the Ricky were there almost the whole entire time. Troll was able to put a little bit of a fight, and he was able to hold the fight until the very end. But the big problem is, is OD is really dang good against the troll. So even if you do have that net worth, and there's no BKB on this troll, which I'm going to go check now to see if there was, and there was not. He went for a Monkey King bar, actually, as his second item here. 
Actually, I could probably check that in the graphs. Let me go to player items. Uh, he actually had a javelin at the start and was holding on to it to maybe go into the maelstrom, but realized he couldn't do it. So he went into the S and Y and then afterwards went straight into the Monkey King bar and then just realized his problems right then and there. But uh, that being said, it is a best of three, though. They still have a very decent chance to come back and go back into the game here. But the scoreboard shows there's a lot of gold and Payne know exactly how to use it. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We got the next game right around the corner for the low, for the minor qualifiers for the Star Ladder Minor. Infamous Gaming versus Pain Gaming, game number two. Stay tuned. <laughs>